entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. No bother, Miss Annie. Tag and Lee Wong, good friend. It isn't a question of friendship, Lee Wong. Tag is supposed to be at home right now doing the chores. He's being punished for staying out late last night. Now go on home, Tag. Yes, sir. What's between you two, anyhow? Uh, like I say, Tag and Lee Wong, good friend. Talk about many things. Your special lacy cotton come out real good, Miss Annie. That will be two bit and twelve cents, please. Have you seen the Scanlon brothers lately? Uh, not since I throw flat iron at them. Uh, next time they come, uh, Lee Wong not be so gentle. See? Have kept Lee Wong family safe for many years. We'll continue to do the same. Mm. Oh, it's beautiful, Lee Wong. A real work of art. But I wouldn't try using this on the Scanlon brothers if I were you, or anybody else for that matter. Lofty is a good peace officer. If you get in trouble, call him. Okay, Miss Annie, if you say so. <laughs> Goodbye, Leroy. Goodbye. Good morning, Miss Oakley. Good morning, Mr. Rand. Is my laundry ready, Lee Wong? Uh, laundry ready, Mr. Rand. Did you starch the colors? Plain this starch, Mr. Rand. Uh, four bit, three cents, please. Have you changed your mind about selling that property of yours at the corner of Main and Elm? No change of mind yet, Mr. Rand. Not even if I tell you I've got a customer that'll pay you as high as $2,000 for it? Not enough, Mr. Rand. This town grow fast. Lee won't keep land maybe two, three year more. Uh, property maybe bring him ten, twelve thousand dollars. dollars uh, Lee Wong will wait. Some people say a depression's coming on. Oh, no depression, Mr. Rand. No depression. Well, I hope you're right. paper was tied around the rock. Lee Wong no savvy. You read him, please. You don't want Chinaman and Diablo. Go back to China where you belong. If you don't leave town, we'll run you out. Signed, property owners of Diablo. Too bad, Lee Wong. Money fix broken window, but money will not fix Lee Wong's broken feelings. Work, Annie. You the one who broke the window? It's a lie. I didn't break it. You sure tore out in a hurry. If you didn't do it, why'd you run? Everybody knows me and my brother's been having trouble with that Chinaman. 
If I'd have been seen around there, I'd have gotten the blame for it, so I got out. You can leave now, Deputy. You heard his story. Pointing that gun at a peace officer won't help either one of you, Nick. What are you always picking on us for? We're not the only ones in town that hate Chinamen. Maybe not. But you Scanlon brothers are the only ones that have been showing it. Is there a law that says we got a likely one? No. But there is a law that says you can't go around roughing up people and destroying property. I never laid a finger on the Chinaman, and she never saw me throw no rock. Well, then what were you doing in town? You were supposed to be riding herd for old Lowry. He went in for tobacco and coffee. And there they are. You got a pretty weak case, Deputy. Maybe, until I find witnesses. You won't find any. I can believe that. You two plug uglies have got the whole town buffaloed, haven't you? We're lucky. We got lots of friends. Well, don't stretch your luck too far. No, no, right? Yeah, right when he was in the Chinaman shop. Since nobody in town's gonna think he's behind this trouble. Night, Tag. Hi, Daddy. Annie? Yes? What's the trouble Lee Wong's having? I wish I knew, Tag. I guess it's just somebody that doesn't like him. Why not? He's a nice fella and smart, too. But you should see him at... Well, never mind. But I just can't figure out why somebody wouldn't like him. Well, there's some people, Tag, that have silly fears about other people that don't live exactly as they do. I don't know why they don't take the trouble to understand them. Oh, don't you worry about that now. You go to sleep. All right. Good night. Annie? Yes? Are you gonna punish me tomorrow? Well, you sneaked out today. I don't see any reason why I ought to shorten it. Oh, Annie. Well, you go to sleep now. We'll see what happens tomorrow. All right. Good night. Good night, Tag. The Scanlon boys are in town getting drunk over Zrieger's Cafe. I'll check it before turning in. Oh, Lofty. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. All right, Annie. Night. Good night. Doggone it, Annie. You're getting prettier every day. Oh, go on. <laughs> Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. This is a free country and I'm no Chinaman. Drink your coffee and sober up, and stop talking about the China. Get him out of here fast before he makes trouble for all of us. What are you trying to do, get Rand Sordas and stop all that easy money? No, all I want is more of it. Keep your voice down. Come on, let's go. All right, all right. Well, anyway, you are. Look who blew in. Don't start picking on him. All right, all right, all right. Good night, everybody. And you too. Cup of coffee, sir. This is how it's done. Now you try him, Tag. All right, Lee Wong. Gee, 11 o'clock. I better get home. If Annie catches me out again tonight, the fanciest president in the world won't help me. Think we'll finish on time? When is Miss Annie's birthday? Day after tomorrow. 
Time is short, but Lee Wong will help. Miss Annie will get present on time. Gee, it sure has been swell of you to show me how to work the leather. <laughs> Pleasure is Lee Wong's. Better go now. All right. Good night, Lee Wong, Mrs. Lee Wong. Wong will take care of everything. It is not needed to make trouble for you and spoil birthday surprise for Miss Annie. Go home. All right, Lee Wong. You slugged me? No, Lee Wong tried to help. You dirty skunk and find him. Help! Help! I done nothing. It's this Chinaman here. He murdered my brother. No, Mr. Deputy. Big Don't Mr. listen to the lion skunk. It's not a question of what I think, Lee Wong. Look at the facts. Nick Scanlon was killed with your dagger. I tell you, dagger stole from me yesterday. You don't believe? We believe you, Lee Wong, but the facts are working against you. Now listen. First, the dagger. Second, the murder happened at the end of the alley that runs behind your place. And third, your feud with the Scanlans is known all over town. Lee Wong only know he not guilty. Somebody put frame around him. Well, it certainly couldn't have been Clint. You can say what you want to about him, but I've never seen two brothers that were so close. Well, finally wake up, sleepyhead. Hey, Annie, what's Lee Wong doing in jail? Nick Scanlon was killed last night, Tag. Lee Wong is suspected. Suspected? Well, he didn't do it. What do you know about it? Gosh, Annie, please don't be sore at me, but I... I snuck out again last night, and when I was coming home, I saw it happen. You saw what happen, Tag? Well, I was at Lee Wong's house. When it got to be 11 o'clock, I left. I went out the back door and down the alley. And I saw this man standing at the end of the alley. Then these two other men came by, and he attacked them. But I didn't know he was killing them. One was killed. Well, after he knocked them both down, he ran down the alley past me. You see who it was? No, it was too dark. Well, what did you do then? Ran back to Lee Wong's. He took a look at him and told me to go home. So I know he didn't do it. Well, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? As far as we're concerned, it does. But you're ready to go to trial with his story, though. Prosecutor make it look like nothing more than a little boy's nightmare. But it wasn't a nightmare. It was the truth. Maybe so, Tag, but Lofty's right. And what were you doing at Lee Wong's house last night? I can't tell you, Annie. I just can't tell you. What difference does it make, Annie? At least now we have the facts. Good morning, folks. Just heard about my good friend Lee Wong. Come to do what I could to help. There's been some ugly talk going around. Lynch talk. Well, we'll have none of it in here, please. Oh, of course, uh, thoughtless of me. Uh, would you mind if I talk to the prisoner? If it's agreeable to him. My sympathies, Lee Wong. Looks rough, eh? What you need's a good lawyer, Lee Wong. 
Annie. One of them fire-eating, jewelry-swaying spellbinders from up at the Capitol. With a local man, you won't have a chance. But a high-powered lawyer will get you off scot-free. Those kind of lawyers cost a lot of money, though. You have any cash on hand? Levon, not guilty. Not lead lawyer. Oh, that's where you're making a grave mistake. Tell you what. As a friend, I could raise all the money you need. Just sign over that Main and Elm property as security. I love that townspeople aren't exactly friendly towards you, Wong. They may cause trouble. Li Wong, not afraid. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. I can't do much for you. But if you change your mind, I'm always ready to help you. Bye, Deputy. Tag, I want you to be absolutely sure. This is a very serious accusation. What's a serious accusation? Tag thinks Rand is the murderer. It's just like I said, cross my heart. When the man ran down the alley, he tore his coat on a nail, because I heard it rip. And now Mr. Rand's wearing a bandage on his wrist from where he hurt himself. All right. Suppose it was Rand. What's his motive? What can we prove in a kid's flimsy evidence? If you want proof, I can show you the nail. Well, after all, Lofty Tag does have a point. Let's take a look at that nail. What do you say? Sure, anything to help poor Lee Wong. All right, all right. I might as well go along. Don't worry, Lee Wong. We'll get you up, because I told him everything. Everything? Well, not everything. I'm not going to spoil Annie's surprise no matter how much punishment I have to take. All right, let's go, Tag. It's like Vince working that mob up for trouble. You go with Tag, Annie. I better stay here in the office. piece of cloth, all right. There's no doubt about it. Stay where you are, I'll shoot! And just what is Miss Oakley, the sheriff's niece, doing with my coat? This is evidence against you, Mr. Rand, for the murder of Nick Scanlon. And who's going to believe that a torn coat makes me a murderer? There was a witness that saw you tear it and hurt your arm. Oh, I see. Naturally, you're not going to tell me who this so-called witness is. Naturally not. I don't believe there is a witness. You're taking a shot in the dark. Well, then that shot is going to bring the truth to light. You're not going anywhere without me, Miss Oakley. They're moving on the sheriff's house to lynch the Chinaman. I thought you'd like to see it. Well, they're lynching the wrong man. This is the one they want. What's that? He killed your brother. Pay no attention to her, Clint. Better go back and give that mob some help. What makes you think he killed my brother? There was a witness that saw him, and this torn coat is the evidence. You're not going to believe a ridiculous story like that, Clint. Wait a minute. I'm just beginning to see things clear. We didn't make enough trouble for that Chinaman to make him sell out cheap. 
So you thought you'd make some real trouble for him, like killing my brother. Nick was my friend. I liked him. Yeah, but you like Lee Wan's Main Street property more. <laughs> Get out that window. And remember, I've got a gun at your back. Get out of here, boy. We got you surrounded, Lofty. Send the Chinaman up. Nobody else will get hurt. He's innocent. And even if he weren't, you're breaking the law by trying to take him. If you don't send him up, we're going to come in there and get him. You want him, you'll have to get me first. Two of you boys go get that log, we'll bust him the door. Clint's been shot by Rand. He said Rand killed his brother. Lofty! Lofty! Rand's got Annie. Where? At his office. Get out there. Really over. Lee Wong just sold the property that Rand was trying to take away from him. The railroad bought it for $22,000. Oh, Lofty, that makes me so happy. Oh, which reminds me. Happy birthday, Annie. Well, so it is. Gee, I've been so busy, I forgot all about it. This beautiful bridle. I bought the leather and made it myself. That is, Lee Wong helped me, you know, showing me and everything. That's where I was the nights I snuck out. Which reminds me. Oh, Annie, you're still gonna punish me? <sighs> After all the trouble you went to to make me this lovely gift. Tag, I think I'm the one that ought to ask for forgiveness. Oh, that's easy. You're forgiven. And I promise I'll never sneak out at nights again. Ever. <laughs> Happy birthday for me, too, Annie. Oh, Lofty! Oh, aren't they pretty? <laughs>
hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. I can see that, but what's this one about? Highwaymen. Outlaws? Nope, old-time English highwaymen. Any good? Yep. You don't much like talking, do you, Wendy? Nope, too much gab in the world. Good thing to remember. Well, gosh, how am I going to learn anything if I don't talk to people? By listening, reading books. Say, can I read that one when you're finished with it? Yep, come up to the ranch and get it. Gee, thanks, Wendy. Howdy, folks. Hi, Wendy. We've been a little bit worried about you. What for? With Pop Brennan dead and his grandson coming to take over the ranch, they may not need a caretaker. Well, I reckon I'll stay there just the same. Thanks for being neighborly. Get going, Jessamine. You know, Lofty, if they put him off that ranch after 20 years, it'll break his heart. He's too old to get a job anywhere else. Yeah, and what would he do with all those books? your feet and start talking. What happened? I don't know, Lofty. I had him roped and somebody shot him. Well, he's done for. Two hours after, I had too much of a lead on me. Who shot this man? No, ma'am. I was too busy chasing my horse. Thanks for stopping the ambush. I'm Tim Brennan. Going to take over the lazy beast spread. My grandpappy willed it to me. Oh, we've been expecting you. I'm Annie Oakley. I'm Deputy Craig. Any idea who was gunning for you? Just road agents, I guess. Or they might have been after Comanche here. Oh, 
He's a lot of horse, all right. The Comanche's worth a lot of money. Best racer west of the Mississippi. Never lost a race yet, either a quarter or five miles. Either of you boys plugged this fellow? No. Well, there's a lot of lead flying. Maybe you stopped a stray bullet. Yeah, maybe so. Well, if you need us, we'll be at the Lazy Bee. Thanks again. You turn right around and ride back to town and tell Doc Brennan he's got a case here for the coroner. Yes, ma'am. What's in your mind, Annie? I think Brennan was lying. Well, why would he about shooting a gunslinger in a mask? I don't know, Lofty. There was a single rifle shot fired, and Brennan had a rifle. <laughs> Grandpa sure fixed me up fine. Leaving me this rat hole while Bob gets the mine and the store in Mesa City. Well, I'll tell you, if I was you, I'd tell the law that it was my cousin that was gunning for me. Let them take him. That's not very smart, Calaveras. Grandpappy's will leaves me everything when Bob cashes in. If law knew we were feuding, I'd be the first one they'd grab when he gets knocked off. Looks like Bob don't hanker to have you out living. He knows doggone well it's either him or me. It's going to be him just as soon as I get the idea to leave me in the clear. Well, who's been living here? An old partner of Grandpappy's that he pensioned off after he made his pile. Must be local, reading all these books. Howdy. You the caretaker? Yep. Wendy Smith. Been expecting you. Well, the ranch won't need a caretaker anymore, Wendy. Are you telling me to vamoose? Well, I've got plenty of help as it is. But your grandpappy said I was to stay here no matter what. He didn't tell me anything about it. Well, I don't never argue with nobody. I'll get now. I'll be back and get the rest of my stuff later. <laughs> Crazy as a coot. How about rustling up some grub? Sure. Deal to get me the rest of Grandpappy's estate. From what? Reading a book? Yep. The idea that'll keep me in the clear. Which is what? An alibi. An alibi they can't break. And Comanche's gonna make it work. Comanche? Are you getting as local as old Wendy from these books? Read this. According to the coroner's report, he was killed with this rifle bullet. It could have been Brennan. Yeah. Any judge in the world would only thank them for shooting a masked bandit. Well, why wouldn't he admit it? Annie, can I ride out to the Lazy Bee and get a book from Wendy? All right, Tay. Oh, wait a minute. I'll ride out with you. All right. I want to see how Wendy's getting along with his new boss. And if I know you, Miss Sherlock Holmes, you'll also check on a certain rifle. If I get the chance. I'll race you out of town. All right. <laughs> About a hundred extra pounds, Brennan. Good. I want to toughen him up so he thinks he's carrying a feather when we go on that big ride. But you boys cover me. Cousin Bob isn't going to quit any more than I am. What's the matter, Annie? This is where that man was killed. Yeah, that's right. What about it? 
Brennan came from up there. Tag your own on ahead and see Wendy. I'm gonna look around here and see if I can't find that rifle shell. All right. <laughs> shape now. Spells the beans, don't it? Not exactly. You see us Brennans think alike. Bob doesn't want to make this a public fight any more than I do. I'll do the talking. You boys act dumb. Whatever it was, Jezmeyer, looks like Annie's taking charge. Mr. Brennan, I caught this man sniping from cover, shooting this way. I wasn't shooting at them. I was shooting at a deer. Did you see the deer, too? Sure, it was a good-sized buck. Sorry I made the mistake, mister. That's all right. Accidents can happen. Eddie! Eddie! Wind Wendy's ranch is not there. When I looked in, a lot of his stuff is gone. That's right, Wendy moved out. Where'd he go? He didn't say. Hey, maybe he's up in that old camp of his. We'll take a look and see, Tag. I'm awful glad you didn't get in any real trouble this time, Mr. Brennan. Thanks for being on the job anyway. He's too much on the job. Wendy, for once in your life, will you please talk? What happened to make you leave the ranch? Oh, nothing special. Place got crowded, Brennan said, so I just pulled up stakes. But you were so sure you were going to stay there. Yeah, I thought so. But old Pop Brennan never gave me nothing in writing, except maybe that letter. What letter? It come just before old Pop died. But I was reading a book and just kind of never got around to reading the letter. Where is it? I don't know, son. Oh, say, I went and fetched that book that you wanted to read. There it is. Gee, thanks, Wendy. Wendy. Did you see that shooting going on down there? Yep. Well, did you see any deer around? Deer? Ain't seen one in a month. Why? Oh, nothing. Only if you see any peculiar goings on with Tim Brennan, you'll let us know, won't you? Sure. Oh, by the way, old timer, one of these days you better get around to finding that letter. So long, Wendy. So long. So long, Wendy. Bye. Right. I'm going to make that ride to Mesa City tomorrow night. Kind of sudden, ain't it? It's got to be sudden. Yeah, and Comanche's in good shape, too. But 100 miles in one night, 50 up and 50 back. I don't know. He fell on the book, did it, didn't he? My alibi's gonna be better than his. You're the boss. Time for supper, Tag. Right now? Mm hmm right this... Oh, yeah. Evening, Miss Annie. Hello, Mr. Brennan. Had a little accident. What happened? Oh, I stumbled over a rock and sprained my ankle. Not much, but I can't ride for a while. By the way, have you got the time my watch stopped? 6.15. Thanks. I guess we better get back to the ranch before dark. Let's go. Hiya! Adios. Go. Just like a 
Thank you. See you in the morning. Go, boss. Not a slip up. Ten and a half hours. Hurry up. We gotta make a check with our official timekeeper. Why do horses have to be fed so early in the morning? Because they don't stay up after bedtime reading their books. Here, let me tuck your shirt tail in. Morning, Miss Annie. Good morning. You just getting up? Yes. Well, you couldn't have seen Comanche. The rascal broke out of his corral last night. Oh, that's too bad. If I see him, I'll let you know. How's the ankle? Well, pretty painful. Between it and Comanche, I didn't get much sleep last night. Well, we better get on with the hunt. Hey, uh, yeah. How's that for setting an alibi with the law for witnesses? <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, boss. Ha! Ah! Brennan Eyre murdered. Robert Brennan, heir to his grandfather's fortune, was shot to death in his bedroom. The assassin left no clue, but a vigorous investigation is being conducted under the leadership of Sheriff Stokes of Mesa City. It couldn't have been Tim Brennan, Sheriff Stokes. Well, he's the only one with a motive. He and his cousin hated each other, even before the old man left the most of the estate to Bob. Well, we saw Brennan the night of the murder at 6.15, and then again the next morning about 6. I guess I'm beat. No man could have ridden 100 miles to Mesa City and back in 12 hours. Sure he could. Tag, nobody asked for your opinion. It's not just an opinion, Annie. It's a truth. It's in the book, and I'll show you. Here it is. Dick Turpin rode from London to York in one night, and Jack Nevison, another highwayman, rode 190 miles in 15 hours. Well, he's right, Lofty. And Nevison made that ride to establish an alibi. But Brennan can't even ride with that sprained ankle. Well, he could have faked the ankle. I'll bet he read this book when it was at the ranch. I can't arrest a man because I think he read a book. Well, you could if you broke an alibi and proved the ride could be made. I don't know the horse flesh that could do it. I do. And so do I, Tag. Annie, you're not thinking of making that ride. Why not? If Comanche can do a target, certainly can. And Lofty, if Brennan is a cold-blooded murderer, it's up to us to prove it. Oh, it ain't no use, boss. The book ain't here. I should have gotten rid of it, but I didn't know if the alibi had worked. The old buzzard must have took it. And if he shows it to his friends, they're bound to get ideas about our alibi. Go up and find Wendy, and find that book. Right.
Tag, I found that letter right in this book here. Gee, that's great, Winnie. And listen, you know that Highwayman book of yours? Yeah. Well, it's helping us solve a murder. How come? You know Jack Nevison tried to make that alibi? Sure. They think Brennan rode to Mesa City on Comanche to shoot his cousin. Now, Annie's making the same ride on Target to prove it could be done. See, what did I tell you about learning from books? You're right. Well, I gotta get back to town. Lofty told me to tell you to watch every move Brennan makes. Sure will. <laughs> Boy target. <clears throat> Evening. Windy. Kind of late to be a calling, but Jessamine ain't no racehorse. Anything wrong? Well, I don't know. But Brennan's men's been hanging around my place, and it might be they heard Tag tell me about Annie riding to Mesa City. Brennan knows that much. He can guess the rest. He'll try to bushwhack any. Yeah, but where? That's what we have to find out. Pull it up. That's good. Yo, can get up on that rock over there with your rope in case this thing misses. Right. Nice shoot. Yank it up. Okay. Thinking about the same time I did. Only she's not going all the way. Thanks to you two. But this makes me kind of late to break that alibi. Well, you may not have broken it, but you sure sprained it. A lot more than Brennan did his ankle. Come on, let's go. So, partner, if anything happens to my grandsons, and knowing them, I expect something will, I'm fixing it for you to get everything I leave behind. I know how you feel, Wendy, but Pop had to go. And he's seen to it that you're taken care of. Hey, what are you going to do with all that money? I got it. I'll build a library full of books in Diablo. Hey, a great idea. Well, make sure you have plenty of books in there about highwaymen. You can never tell when they'll come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> 